so fancy. All right, so this is your needle felting class. In your kits, there is a needle felting pad. Um, I included it just in case this is the first time you've ever needle felted at all and you didn't have one at home. Uh, feel free to, if you do, use um, like a, oh gosh, what are they called? Burlap with uh, rice in it. You can use that as well. But the foam you can find pretty reg regularly at craft stores. If you wear these out, this is just medium density um, core board. And it does come in different thicknesses and different sizes. I just cut them down for the class. So that's in your kit. Your locks of whichever color you picked at checkout. Um, there was white, gray, black. These are Gotland locks. So you have those. These are very our very last thing we do. So you just put those to your side. You can just stare at all the prettiness of them. Then in your little baggie, if you haven't torn into these, be careful when you do because on the inside are the little eyes, the bead eyes. And we're not making alien sheep. It's just I wanted to give you extra beads in case sometimes the holes on these are different sizes and your needle won't fit through them. So there are extra beads in there. We all, I mean, you could put four eyes on them if you want to, but that's why there's extras. Uh, included two different, or two of the same needle felting needle. These are uh, 38s and they're just a general purpose needle. There are two on the off chance that as beginners you break one. Uh, I did a class with Shannon Doa and had only sent one and didn't even think about it, but sure enough, one broke on someone and luckily they had already bought a different kit. So they had another one. So there are two. The best place for these are right in your mat. Uh, so you don't stab yourself. Uh, if you've never used these before, we'll go over a little bit of a safety in a minute. Just this, just little piece of felt to hold your needles. And on your little sheep, your little wood sheep, uh, I make these, I call them bobbins, is the thread for your eyes and a sewing needle. Just on the off chance you don't have one of those, I wanted to send it so that in your kit you had everything you needed to do your sheep. Then for your wool portion, you have two different um, pieces of wool in your kits. There is a long piece, and this is just merino roving. It's not super fine merino kind of a middle of the road. It's a good inside piece. And then you should have a, and it's kind of, yeah, you can see the difference. This one is shorter. And so this is gonna be for your head and your ears. So if you wanna just put this aside for now, the first one we're gonna use is your longer piece. Now that's, it's either in one long strip. I think one of the kits may have been in two pieces but they're all gonna go to the same purpose for the body. So that's what we're gonna start with first. So keep that close to you. Uh, with, as far as safety, we don't have any kids in the class. A lot of times I will teach, on average 10 is the youngest I'll teach this class to, just cause attention and I don't wanna be responsible for bleeding fingers um, and kids crying. You know, if, you're, if you wanna be an adult and cry, go for it but um, I don't want to make kids cry. Uh, needle felting needles, if you've never used one before, if you've never held one, this side is barbed. Now, they're barbed, depending on the kind of needle, they are barbed on each side. These, I believe, are triangle um, shape. I can't remember. One, two, yes, these are triangle ones. So there's barbs on each side. They're not like a normal needle where they're going one way. They're barbed backwards. So if you poke this into your finger, you have to pull it out. And if you think about barbed wire, it's, I mean, it's not as bad as barbed wire, but it doesn't feel great. So safety wise, be aware that they are very sharp tools. Always, my only kind of rule that I have when I teach is stab into your mat, not up in the air holding your peas, holding your head as we get going. Don't stab in the air. Always be stabbing into your mat. You want to hear that crunch as we go. Um, that's kind of a, a good rule. It's what I've told my kids when they're doing it. It's what I've told every age of adult that has come to teach or come to learn from one of the classes. Is stab into your mat. Whatever your mat is, stab into your mat. And that will cause um, less injuries or prevent 
injuries. So we're going to start with our long piece. And just holler if you have a question. Stop me at any time. If you've never done this and you're like, hey, wait, I don't know what we're doing, just holler and we'll we'll get you back on track. So your little tools, everything else can just go to your side up here on your table. But what we're aiming for for a body, and I like to show you kind of the end product of each step, is a snowball, tennis ball, just kind of a nice round ball is what the first step of this sheep is. And these may look a little complicated. They're really not. They're just a couple of uh, basic shapes. If you find a different way to get to a ball than what I show you, by all means, that's perfectly fine. Um, there's many roads to needle felting. But what I like to do with my big long piece, and this is uh, roving, marina roving, I said that, you can use various different types of roving for your core. A lot of times it is, um, oh, what is the name of it? Coriadale is a lot of core wool. And it doesn't need to be pretty. A lot of core wool will actually have um, VM still in it, the vegetable matter from the sheeps, because it's not super fine processed wool. And that's totally cool because you're covering this up. Uh, most times your core wool is either covered by a color, uh, some kind of locks, um, you're not going to see it. So take your piece and make your ball. Now, if you want to do it differently than I do, that's fine. There is no wrong way. Uh, it's also very forgiving. If you get to this point and you don't like how it looks, you can undo it. You haven't stabbed this at all with a needle. So just as you go, and this is the way I go, I put a knot in the middle of my roving. Not super tight but just to give me a starting point. And then from here, I have two tails. I have one on this side and one on this side. I'll take one and wrap it this way, kind of pulling as I go. And then I'll take this one and wrap the other way. Now, if you don't like how large your body is, you can take some of this off and if you want to do that, if you want a really small sheep or you're saving it because you want to make multiple sheep, um, you can just pull this off. So roving is aligned fibers. If you've never used this, if you're strictly a knitter and this is your first fibery art project, these are all the fibers of the sheep. And each part of this, so when I pull out a little bit, you can kind of see it. It's hard to see on white. This end is like the cut side, and this is um, where it would have grown out from last year. So that is a staple length of a sheep. So then in roving, they're just aligning all those staple lengths. Another way you could do your ball, if you don't like tying a knot, let me grab another piece. You could just start rolling it, kind of like if you're doing Play-Doh. Just make sure you're uh, rolling it and turning it at the same time. And you can roll it just like Play-Doh or dough, biscuit dough, and you're gonna get your basic shape. Now, the only important thing about this base is we are gonna be stabbing the locks into it. So it does need to be pretty tight. You're not gonna want it to be super, super flimsy. Like you see this part here, how it's just kind of like smushy. You do wanna roll it a little bit, um, tight and firm. So if you need to undo your ball and go again, feel free to do as many tries as it um, takes to make you happy. And if you wanted a larger sheep, say you want to make another one of these after class, you just make this body shape bigger. Just keep in mind, it's going to take more locks to get that body shape covered. All right, is everybody good on their balls so far? All right, no one's hollering, so I think so. So if I have this shape, you can see how those fibers grabbed each other. So sheep fibers and wool especially, this is why wool sweaters shrink, want to interlock with each other. I'll so, say, yes, ma'am. question, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Do, you, do you, we want, what do you, what we want is round or do you want an oblong? 
It sounded like you want it round. That's up to you, actually. If you want a long sheep, you can make him a long sheep. If you want him round, we're going for like a baseball shape. For this class, I tend to do them round, just like they're sitting, because we're not putting feet on them. So they more look like they're muffins out in the yard versus standing up out in the field. So if you need to redo that, fine. That's cool. Um, the fibers want to interlock. So I haven't needle felted this at all yet. And it's pretty, pretty round. But if you do have an oblong one and you want to change it a little bit, you're going to take your needle, stab down. And another important thing while you're doing needle felting is whatever angle you're stabbing at, make sure you're pulling your needle back out that way. Uh, that's how needles get broken, is if you stab in and then you turn it and pull out a different way. They are thinner here than they are in the shaft. So that's right where they break is right there. So make sure when you go in, you're coming straight back up the way you went in. So if you don't like a side or you have an oblong sheep, just take your needle and go slow at first if you've never handled one before. Um, just so you get a feel for it, you'll hear the wool crunch. And you can manipulate the parts that are sticking out, the parts you don't like. Um, if you ended up with an oblong shape, you'd stab, like turn it up so that you're always stabbing down and tack that end back in. And just take a minute till you're happy with your ball. You can use different color core wools. Um, you can use what you have on hand. You can use the um, tail ends of other projects and mix them all together, especially if you know you're gonna cover them up. So the only person I can see on my screen is Lindsay. So if y'all have any questions, I can't see you raising your hands or anything. I can though, you're good. Okay, awesome. Okay, so right now it does not matter which side is up. When we get to it's time to put our heads on, we are gonna have to decide what our bottom is because we will flatten that a little bit. So if you have your ball, that's all you need to do with it right now. So just take this and set it aside and we will move on to our heads. Now the heads, we're gonna use our small piece, but this small piece, we also need to save a bit for our ears. So ears don't take as much as you would think. Um, actually not much at all. So this piece is actually, this is too small. This is a more than, or less than I gave you. So let me go back to what the size I gave you all for heads. So if you take this piece, and you just pull some off, that's more than enough for my ears. Um, it is maybe an inch wide by eight inches long. So just take a look, just take some off for your ears and set that aside. So you know that you're gonna have enough for your ears. Now whatever is left for your head is kind of um, flexible for what you like. Now I have, if you like, oh, these are all kind of the same. I have a few different ones. You can see that these two, they're two different heads, two different shapes, two different sizes. That's determined by how much you start with. This one's bigger. This guy has a big old nose. Okay, so this changes depending on what you start with. Needle felting is easier to take some off or start with little and add more versus using more and trying to take some off. So if you want to have a small-ish nose, if you like the size of this one versus this one, keep that in mind as we're rolling and as our noses build up here in a minute. This is the shape we're aiming for. You can see it's here, um, it's rounded here and fuzzy on the back end. This fuzzy bit is what we're gonna to attach to our bodies. So let me show you how to do it. If I have my big long piece, the easiest way for me to describe this to you 
is yours if you've ever rolled a sleeping bag back into that little tiny case they give you <laughs> when it first comes from the store it, that's how we're trying that's how tight we're trying to roll it to get this head shape here and the way i do it and you can either do this on your mat or just on your table because we're not stabbing this yet is to start from one end and roll now remember there is no wrong way to do this if it starts looking super super crazy and starts looking like a cinnamon roll you can unroll it and you can try again but the way i start is just start pinching here and rolling and i know that's hard to see because my fingers are in the way which is why another camera would have been ideal but mine starts spreading out what i do is i pick a side I'm gonna pick the left side to be the side that's going to attach to my sheep. This side stays fuzzy. So as I'm rolling this one, I'm gonna take this one and fold it in. And then roll some more, keeping in mind that I have to fit this sleeping bag in that teeny tiny bag that some giant machine stuffs that sleeping bag into. So as I go, I'm deciding this is his nose part tuck that in and keep rolling. Now, if you get to a point where you've decided that your head is big enough and you don't wanna use this, we can just tear this off. And I'll do this again here in a minute. I'm just gonna keep rolling, keep tucking. Now our noses need to be tight because you will be stitching your eyes to this and you'll be attaching your um, ears to it. So that looks good to me. So I'm gonna show you how, to, how I pull this. Sometimes it takes a lot of strength, sometimes pulling it out does not. Depends on how far back on that, that piece of fiber you were. And I haven't touched this at all with a needle felting needle. And you can see I've made like a little cocoon sleeping bag. Fuzzy end nose end so to manipulate this guy you're going to start stabbing to make your nose shape all right and i tend to not stab the side i know i'm going to attach to the sheep because you want to keep these fuzzy bits down here loose so that you can needle felt this loose part to the body. So take a minute and if you need to re-roll, go for it. If you have a question, holler. Keep in mind you're stabbing down into the mat. The best way to do your nose shaping, instead of trying to turn your hand and stab this way and maybe cause breaking your needle, is to rotate the head and stab down turn it stab down if you need to do the nose part i turn it up and just do these slower because your fingers are on either side and i did not include band-aids in your kits so just go slow if you have to stab the directly onto the nose i'm sorry uh, i have a question yeah I lost connection, so I missed some of it. Okay, Nancy, I'm have rolling. you? Nancy, this is being recorded, so you can piece. watch it later if you'd like when it's done from the start. Okay. Is that which part? Which part can are I just, you on, Nancy? I'm just rolling the nose. Okay. So you haven't missed much. Um, I'm going to do the nose again. I'm going to make another one. I'm going to make a smaller one, actually. So to make a smaller one, I'm going to start with a smaller bit of fiber. You can also, there's no wrong way to tear this fiber when needle felting. If you want to tear your fiber, so if this is your, your length of fiber, you can also tear down the middle. Or you can pull it off the end. If you've ever been handling fiber and you feel like you can't pull it, like you can't pull this apart, like holy cow, that is so strong. 
it's because you're holding both ends of the fiber. You're holding the cut side and last year's cut side at the same time. That's called a staple length in needle felting and spinning, all the fiber arts. If you have both those ends, you're gonna find it very hard to pull this. So if you need to do that, just spread your hands out and you'll see it spread just as a side note. But anyway, so back to our heads. I have a smaller bit of fiber here. This is another way you can do heads. You can tie it just like you tied a knot in your body and wrap this way. Wrapping, making that knot in the center is also a really good way to make sure you're gonna have a solid base. So you can either roll it like a sleeping bag or you roll it just like we did for the head, or sorry, for the body. That keep in mind that now you need that oblong shape for the head. This is where part of their personality comes in too, because if you want a big fat nose, um, they're gonna have wider faces. If you want a really skinny face, um, use a smaller piece of fiber in the beginning. So that's just another way you can do them. I like the sleeping bag method because it kind of blends better as you go. You're also going to find um, if you don't stick with the same core wool or the same wool that you use all the time, you're going to find that each wool behaves differently. Uh, so don't get used to something and then switch wools and you're like, holy cow, I must be doing something wrong. You really might not be. It's the different properties of wool. Every sheep's fleece is very different. Um, this is some CVM from my mom's farm. This needle felt incredibly fast. And you can see it's a much denser, less processed fleece. Um, so just be aware of that if you're new to needle felting or you pick up some wool and it's it's acting different than you expect it to. Um, it's possibly just the fleece. Could be a different thing. Is there state. any reason why you don't use scissors to cut a length? Uh, no, not really. Um, the only problem with maybe using scissors is, let me show you. If you're cutting a piece of um, roving or fleece for that matter, if you cut, so if you cut right here, you're gonna end up with very, very short ends here. Uh, yes. Possibly straight in the middle of a staple length. So when you go to needle felt this, they may not needle felt um, as well because you're cutting part of it. And you can see that staple length, I don't know if you could even see that. Yeah, small. Staple length is about half the length that it was before. Ah, I see, thank so, you. Yeah, so that'll just cause issues with like maybe these little pieces sticking out in, into your work where you don't really want it to. Um, uh, because it's having, it's having less um, length to needle felt into your work. Okay, there thank are, you. Yeah, there are times like when we get to the end, and especially with our ears, um, it'll show up with our ears. If you wanna trim your needle felting, the best time to trim it is at the end. Um, if there are little flyaways, like if you look at your head as you go, there's little fibers sticking up here. Mm -hmm. That will change per fleece, per core wool you use. Um, sometimes this will be really smooth. Sometimes it's not. But if you want to trim those off when you're done, sure, have at it with your scissors. Okay. And you can, you can cut those little fuzzy bits off. And you're going to see it more here because um, they're like a finer piece than our heads will be. But yeah, don't feel don't feel like you can't mess with your your critters. I am um, I'm all for doing whatever works for you. There are lots of um, videos that have like guidelines and things. A really great person to watch if you love needle felting is Serafina. If you've never run into her before, she's at Maryland Sheep and Wool. She does a lot of YouTube videos on needle felting. They're really really fun to watch. And some of hers are unbelievable. Uh, but she's really great at showing techniques. And how we're going to do our ears is actually, um, her videos are one of the But how are everybody's heads? Are we all okay on our heads so far? You kind of like your shape down here? I think so. Nancy, so. do you need me to 
Did you need me to do another head? Because I can do another head if I need to. Um, you can also smooth your fibers a little bit with your fingers. They will, they want to interlock. They, they really do. The fibers want to grab each other. If you've ever seen a Pantene commercial where they show the hair all blown up with like a microscope, all those scales, sheep have them too. So in a, in a sheep, all those scales want to grab each other like tight. So when you're needle felting, you're forcing those fibers to grab each other. So that's a little bit on that. <laughs> uh, your heads, we can attach them. Um, so you're going to have to get your ball back. This is where you need to decide what side of your ball you like the best. Um, naturally, there's usually a flatter side, just either the way you were felting it, the way you were holding it. Um, so I just kind of pick one. That looks good to me. And I'm going to stab down here kind of in a circular motion to make it a little bit flatter. But you don't have to get super aggressive with it. Just to make yourself a little pad here where it's going to sit on your mat and not roll away. <laughs> okay, once you have that... You're going to take your heads, nose end, fuzzy end. Now, some of you might have a whole lot here. That's okay. We can hide that a little bit on the body. Um, if, it, if it got a little oblong with you, that's okay. But at this point, you need to take your fingers and tug here a little bit to give yourself kind of a landing pad. And you see how mine's starting to come out? Kind of like making a hurricane down here. This is giving me surface area to attach it to my body. There we go. That looks pretty good. If you only have a little bit, that's okay. These, I would not suggest giving these as these to any young child. <laughs> uh, they can be torn apart. Um, if I really wanted to, I could still rip this one's head off. That sounds really horrible, but I could. Um, that's why I say, like, there's no, there's nothing you can screw up too bad because you can always take it off and put it back on. So I'm going to pick a side. I generally like mine to look up at me. You can see this is, like, his body shape here. Let me show you on this one. Here's the, the round part of the ball, and then I put the head facing up towards the ceiling. I do this because I like seeing the little faces. If you want to make an Eeyore type one, just put his head down further. So I pick that spot. It's usually about right where I'm looking at it. I stick my head on my little mushroom hurricane head. All these fuzzy bits are sticking out on your ball. That is what we're going to needle felt to the body. And if you made the hurricane shape all the way around it, your little pumpkin top here, that should be all the way around. So you're going to take your needle felting needle. Keep in mind where your base is. This is a good chance to make him Eeyore if you're not paying attention. Is just stab them a couple times just to tack it down. Make sure you're happy with it. Let go. Make sure you're happy with where the head is, how he's looking. And then you can go through and push more down. Now, this does not need to be perfect because we are going to be needle felting all of those locks to the same part of the bodies. And as you add the locks to this, it's also going to push these fibers further into the body. So just make sure it's on there enough that it's not going to fall off at you. And you should be able to pick it up by the head and it not fall off. If you are not happy with it, if you got it kind of off to the side, pointing down, just take it and pull, and it'll come right off. Give me another chance to show you. Just take it, and I pulled that off, and I just put it right back on. Another great way to vary these, these little critters is to make their heads a different color. You can get gray. Um, or black roving for their heads. 
and make a black face sheep. If you created one of your heads and say it got super, super long on you like this, you say your tail got really away from you, best way to do that is to lay it down kind of like a snake and tack that extra over the back of the body. There's not much you can do wrong with this needle felted sheep. In needle felting, there are different kinds of needles. There lots and lots of different kinds of needles. There's spiral needles. There's different gauge needles. Each gauge number will change how many barbs are on these needles. There are some needles that are reverse. And instead of stabbing in to push the fibers in, they will actually pull fibers out is really good if you're doing like cats or something and you want them to be furry. See, so that one just, you can actually see this. This core wool was two different colors. So you can see where my head got attached. And that's on there. All right, everybody's heads on? Yes, right. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a good point too, if you don't like, um, how their noses look very, very gently. Just you can hold down at the base of the neck. Just have self awareness where your fingers are, and you can stab into that directly into their nose to make them shorter, to make it a little more rounded. The more of these you make, if you get past making this one, which all of you will, <laughs> and you have, have the need to make a whole flock. They don't eat much, I promise. Um, you'll get better at this shape. This is kind of, I don't know, the most complicated it gets in this, <laughs> is getting the head on. There's our heads. Take this and set it aside. We're gonna do our ears next. So for your ears, you should have saved a longer, a little piece. best way to to show you how to do an ear and start to explain it if this is your piece you saved however big however small it was right now take it and divide it in half now you can either divide it the length way or the width way so that your ears you'll be starting with the same amount if you want them to have two different sized ears you'll just change uh the the fiber supply that you start with but I kind of like them to be sort of similar. I don't have my sheep here. They're, they're all pretty symmetrical eared. They might be different colored ears, but they're pretty symmetrical. So there's my two pieces. So ears need to be kind of sticking up for sheep or out. There are some that go straight up like rabbits. Uh, I can't think of the name of them. I think it's one of the Lester's. They actually this they go way up they're like rabbits so you can decide when we go to put them on however which way you want to make their ears but their ears because they're hanging out there kind of alone we need to make them denser and the way we're going to do that is just start with one and i will do this a couple times um let me show you some finished ones we still need the fuzzy bits on one end but you can see some are small some are fat, some are wide. Uh, this one's pretty small and tall. Whatever shape you end up with, just it adds to their personality. But this is the important part, to have the fuzzy bits that we're gonna add to the head. So the way I make them and make them dense is a way, um, a technique called stacking. And stacking is simply just taking your piece, grab your ends, and pull it apart and put it back on top of each other so that piece just got shorter but it also got denser here there are now double the fibers sitting on top of each other than there were so i do that two or three times for ears depending on what my fibers looking like until i know i'm going to have a pretty good chunk of fiber to start with so you can see how that got shorter. So now there's more fibers here. 
that gives me a better place to start instead of trying to work with something so long and wispy. So I take this and I lay it on my mat. Uh, I'm gonna show you on a piece of paper the shape we're going for. So if this is upside down, I'm sorry, I really can't tell on my camera if it is or not, but the shape ear I make are kind of like petals. So this is my, my shape. And the reason I'm showing you this is we're gonna be kind of tracing this shape with our needles. The way we're gonna start though is right up the center of that ear. We're gonna make a center line. But that shape, that top petal shape, is the shape of the ear we're gonna make. And these are your fuzzy bits down here. That'll make more sense in a minute, but I wanted you to see the shape on paper so that you can visualize it onto your wool. So if you have this on your mat, and I will do this more than once, so don't feel <laughs> feel rushed if, if you're not quite up to speed yet. So I hold this down with my fingers. I draw that center line with my needle. So beware of where your fingers are while you're doing this. So I spread them pretty wide, and I'm gonna come down the middle here just a couple times, and you'll see the indents on your wool. They're not super prominent, but that'll give you your center line before you start your petal shape. Okay, Don't do it a ton because it will stick to your mat. <laughs> so just do it maybe once or twice down the center and then kind of make your outline for the petal. So what you're doing is making your petal shape on your ear. Now, the denser you made that stack of wool, the more this will be visible. But what this does is it gives me a place to start for when I fold in my ear. So if I take my right side and I pull it over, you can see it caught on the outside of where my petal shape was. So that's the outside edge of my ear. And I can stab a couple more times and I'll stop and I'll pull in the other side. You see how it made that triangle on its own? And it left my fuzzy bits down here. This is the pattern you're gonna follow to make your ears. And you can just keep stabbing that petal shape. Good thing to know though, is you have to pick it up off your mat every now and again, or you're gonna felt it to the mat. So once you have both sides kind of tacked in, you did your left, you did your right, take it. Don't be afraid to do it, but just yank it off your mat and flip it over. When you flipped it over, then you can go tack this side down in your petal shape and just keep working at them until you're happy. Just make sure you're picking it up and flipping it over and doing it some more. If you find that your ear is super, super thin, this is where you can add more to this or you can take some of your fuzzy ends down here and bring them up onto your ear and stab them in. And pretty quickly, you'll see that they those bits just disappear into it. So I'll do this again. Let me just get this one finished. Okay. This is where you're gonna start seeing those fuzzy bits I was talking about that you could trim when you're done. These aren't super, super fine needles. If you had a finer needle, you could get more of these to lay down. Also, if you start with a finer wool, these will be softer looking. Like I have one here that's a whole lot softer looking because it was a finer roving. You can manipulate these until you're happy with them. Just know as you need a felt, they will get smaller as you go because you're compacting, you're interlocking those fibers with each other. Pick it up, flip it over. If you're way ahead of the game and you're a pro at this, go ahead and do your second ear. 
These are harder to adjust once they're on the head. So make sure you're happy with them here before we go to attach them to the head. These are very hard to, to stab once they're onto your head without getting your fingers. So once you have that basic shape, we will do a little bit more fine tuning to these in a minute, but let me make another ear. So you can see the process again. And if you wanna do your second ear, you can do that along with me. So just take this and set this aside. So again, I'm gonna take my piece, however big this is. Now these should end up kinda similar because I'm starting with the same amount of wool. We'll see if that works out. Make a liar out of me. I'll stack it once, pull it apart and stack it on top of each other again. And I'm gonna do it one more time, creating that denser starting place. Hold my fingers on it. This works with any shape ear. You'll just change that starting design. So if you wanted to do a mouse ear, you would do something round. If you want to do an elephant ear, you make elephant ear shape. But I always make my center line and then I draw my, my petal shape for my sheep. Once or twice down this, each side and I roll one side in, stab it once or twice. It takes very little to hold the fibers in. And I roll this one this way. You gotta use your imagination there for a little bit until you start really seeing that shape. You can take your needle and kind of tease the fibers back in. Kind of think opposite of teasing your hair out. You're kind of pulling them and coaxing them in. Just remember to pull out the same way that you stabbed in so you don't break your needles. If you ever break your needle into your mat, uh, I don't go fishing for it. I don't go trying to dig it out of my mat. I just will push them either in further or push it out the other side. Um, not using your fingers though. Find something hard, end of your scissors or something to push it because you don't really want that into your finger. Make sure you're flipping your ears. So you're not felting it to your needle mat. Is anybody like, hey, you lost me? Or is everyone all right? Sort of. <laughs> I, do have an ear. I don't think it looks much like an ear. That's okay. <laughs> Very creative. Creative I ears. Little shape, but I'm not getting how you're folding it. Okay, let me do it again. Okay. So let me do it with um, more wool so it's maybe a little easier to see on the camera. Okay. This will be a giant ear. <laughs> so if I stab down the middle and I've got my center and I make, if you stab this way and then you stab the other way, it's got, it's got the anchors here, your outside pedal. If you take this side and just kind of lift it with your finger and fold it over, if you're folding your taco shell, now you've got an outside bit where it caught those petal shapes on the one side. It'll want to fold where you had stabbed it a couple times. So let's keep in mind where that petal shape was underneath. And I'll do it again. So this was my outside. That's where we just folded it here. This was my other side over here. So then when I take the opposite side, which now has double because it's got the right side too, and I fold it back, it's also gonna wanna crease where that stab line was. And you just have to keep in mind where that petal shape was, kind of constantly drawing it in your head. And you'll see that if you keep following the same path, if you keep stabbing in this area and a little bit in here as you go, that shape will start to appear. 
So it's, it's kind of like a magic trick a little bit because you, you have to remember where you were stabbing, which is why I make that center line. And this one's really, really big. But you can see there was my fold side here and that was my fold side on the left. So this one's really, and if you don't like how it looks, just keep manipulating it with your needle until you do. If you don't like how it looks at all, <laughs> you can start again. You can always um, pull some of your body and then just make sure you're picking it up and flipping it over. So you see the petal shape a little bit better as when you flip it over. Uh, obviously this one's exaggerated, but I'm not touching any of these fuzzy bits because we need to attach those to the head. I think Hillary, I think you're the one that asked, does that make a little bit more sense? All right, so there's your petals. And like Lindsay said, she is recording this. Um, you can always email me and I can um, walk you through a little bit better if you're really stuck. So that one's giant, it's bigger than my thumb. But if you have two, so now you have two years and those kind of ended up the same. One's a little bit pointier than the other. I'm okay with these not being perfect. Um, I like them to be a little goofy. I mean, their needle felts are cheap. They're not, you can make them more realistic if you'd like, but this, this version is not. So I have my fuzzy bits on these. If you wanna stop here, you can with ears. If you wanna make them more structured, you can do that. The way I do it, you can see this center. I don't know if you can see that or not this way. I have a center crease in mine. This is easier to do if you have a much thicker ear, but the way you do these is I take my ear and it's kind of flat right now and I pinch it kind of like a, a mini, mini taco, I guess, but I'll pinch it down here where the ear meets the fuzz. And then I will turn it. You can see it actually already makes that crevice for you, but I will put this sideways on my mat and I will needle felt right there, keeping that taco pinched that for me. You can go back in and exaggerate this a little bit more by dabbing straight down the center. Now with this roving, it's pretty fuzzy. Um, it's not gonna be super defined. It's gonna be more of a subtle ear divot. But now you've got more of like a coffee bean shape in here because it, it took both sides of those to put them together. So if you wanna do that to your ears, you can. You don't have to. These are your sheep. But the way I do that again, if you wanna see it again, is I fold it over right at the base, take it sideways on my mat, and needle felt down into it. And it makes that crease. So now you have two ears. Anybody wanna guess where we put them? <laughs> on the heads. You find your, your friend, your little white pumpkin you've got going on here. You, you're gonna have to pay attention to where his face is. I have done it before actually not just once, I've done it multiple times, where I'm not paying attention and I'll put an ear here and here. Sorry, that's hard to see. I'll put one like on the top of his head and on like his cheek because I wasn't paying attention. Just gotta rip them off and reposition them. Um, so just make sure that when you're doing it, you're putting one here and here, you know, on either side of his head. So same way as you did your heads, fan out your fuzzy, fuzzy ends, pick that spot on his head Now, how you do this so you're not stabbing into the air, use the edge of your mat, kind of lay them on the edge of your mat. So the head is on the mat, the body's kind of on your table. That way you're stabbing into your head and your mat, not into the air. The only place you don't want fuzzy ends for the ears is right there on the tip of his nose. 
You don't want to stab your bits down here. Anywhere else is fair game because with these locks, which is why this is a great beginner's project, you're going to be covering all of this up. So it does not by any means need to be perfect. They just need to be attached. Stab until they're attached. You can stab into the head right at the base of the ear, right down here, straight down into his head. I swear, my daughter um, tells me that they are not alive until they get their eyes. So you don't have to feel bad about, you know, stabbing him in the head a million times. And then try to get some attached down here back behind where you attach the ear and onto the body if you have enough fuzzy ends. Just so that it's it's on there. So now I've got one. And you got to take your other one and do the same thing. Fan out your fuzzy bits a bit. I tend to go left and right with the fuzzy bits so that I'm not going down onto the nose. Stick them on the head where I like it. Hold it down off the side of my mat and tack those down. You can change the orientation of your ears a little bit depending on where you stab it down here at the base you'll see they kind of, they move as you're interlocking those fibers with your needles, your ears will move. So if you don't like that this one is pointing way off this way, you can stab, this is kind of like backing up a trailer, how you, you turn the wheel the opposite way as you think. Same way with needle felting. If you want this ear to go up, you're gonna be needle felting kind of back behind it. You're pulling those fibers this way. If you want it to go down, you can needle felt behind, a little bit underneath, a little bit to the front of it. Just play with it until you're happy with where they are. If you're totally unhappy with where those ears ended up, if you did what I've done before and put it down underneath his chin, just take it and pull it off and try again. Make sure they're on there good and secure. Again, maybe not a kid's toy, but um, you don't want them just all of a sudden to lose an ear on your table. Now, this one's going to be kind of goofy because his this ear is pointed forward. Can you see that? So now you have your pumpkin with ears now. And you can see mine are not perfectly in the same spot on the head. That's okay. Again, these locks will cover up a lot of uh, variations. You're coming up to the fun part here in a minute. I promise. Not that none of it's fun, but... um. The lock, adding the locks is really fun. If you get to this point and your Sue's does what mine just did, where it does, did a nosedive straight into my mat, um, just flip it over and manipulate your base again. So I, I made my base here and then my head got off of where it is. So perfect way to show you that it can change. Things change. There. You can always, same thing with these, if you want them to stand up more, I'm going to shift where my base was and stab down here. Needle felting is an ever-changing art. Woo! He's head heavy, and he'll stand up. This will change a little bit, too, just because you're smushing this with your hand as you go. So his body shape will change here and there. And it'll change again once we put all those locks on it. Okay, does anyone need me to do ears again? Well, I just have one ear done, so. Okay. I'll <laughs> do another. On. I can do a couple. I have all these little guys down here. I can keep adding ears. And there's no rush. They, um, for those of you that want to see Mystery Fiber Theater 3000, they're holding, they're holding it um, for y'all. So don't worry, no rush. Oh, that's sweet. Dab and fun and peace. 
<laughs> okay, here's another ear. If you want to go ahead, if you have your ears done already, you are going to start manipul manipulating your um, locks. So these are Gotland sheep locks. Uh, they're super, super amazing locks. These are from uh, Border Creek Farm. I believe she comes to Maryland Sheep and Wool. She has amazing, amazing sheep fleeces. So these are Gotland locks. This, these are not typical Gotland locks. Um, they're usually longer and less crimpy. But that's what these are. Uh, if you have, if you ordered a gray one, same thing. They're Gotland locks still. And these are not. Um, you don't want to like super map them to your body. You're gonna want to um, keep a little bit of that structure curly as you go. And you can fluff them out a little bit if you like to give you some more space to cover. But you'll start just picking a spot. And tacking them down. Now I only go maybe once or twice before I go and move on and put more on the body. Then I come back once I have all of it covered. Then I go back and tack these down a little bit more here and there, just so that um, you know, you have enough locks, especially if you're working from a kit versus me having a full a uh, full fleece here. So you can take a chunk, you can take one lock at a time, however you choose and just go along and tack them on your body. Now, if you're working with a gray fleece or a black, I think there was one black one ordered, you're going to want to keep in mind that you're covering a white body instead of a dark body. Um, so your sheep, you need to be more aware of how many locks you're starting with. And you're gonna to want to spread them out a little bit more so that you know that you can go back and cover up the white body, the white core wool. So I take it and I tack them down all over the body. And then I go back and fill in where something is showing through. And it doesn't take very much to keep these on. And now keep in mind, you can always come back in you know, three or four weeks or however long it's been sitting on your shelf, cat ran away with it. And you can go back in with your needle felting needle and tack them back on if one fell off or if the humidity got to one and made it go you know, a little wonky, you can go back and do that. So if you're ahead of the ear game, you can go ahead and start tacking those on. And you can do this at any point. You can go ahead and put your faces on and then come back and do your um, locks if you want to get the, the sewing out of the way, however you want to do it. I do like to keep a nice, let me go back to the one that actually has ears. I like to keep a nice curly one that I find in the little bits that I have with me because I keep that one for the very top of their head. So this one's nice and curly. I'm gonna keep this one and set it over here just so I don't use it on the whole body to keep it for the top of this one's head. So you're just gonna go in and I'm gonna do this a little bit um, haphazardly just so that um, those of you that are getting to the next event, you've got the basics down. You can always go back and fine tune your locks. Um, I did have a gentleman who took the class, um, oh gosh, when was that? July. And he tacked down the ends of every lock and nothing else. And it turned out like this really fuzzy hippie sheep with all these like flyaway curls. It was really, really fun. The only place you can skip putting locks is on that very, very base where you're deciding it can sit on the table. You can, if you have enough, do that as well. But I, I leave it off um, because why waste super pretty locks on something that's just gonna sit on the table? So I leave the bases open. Let 
All right. Put some under their chin, right up against there. Working as you go. If you feel like you're running out of locks, you can tease them open more to cover more surface area. You can, tea, you can pull these open. And then that'll give you a whole lot more curl to work with if you want to do that. Um, there's plenty, there should be plenty in your kits unless you're a super aggressive needle felter and you're really getting these matted to your body. <laughs> There's one that you put on you don't like, just rip it off. Start again. This is where people get their fingers. So keep stabbing towards your mat. Don't pick the sheep up and do it in your hand. Do it down into the mat. I put them, I put a lock also down the side of their ear too covers up your join and a whole lot of my sheep have fleece between their face and their ears and I can tell you from shearing them for seven years now it's a really awful place to have to try to shear because their eyes are right there too I would like it if they didn't but it does work really cutely for these guys See, so now you can't tell if your body is not perfect. You can't tell if your ears aren't on there perfect. You even lose some of that length of your head if your head got super, super long on you as you were rolling it into your sleeping bag shape. All of that gets kind of camouflaged with these locks. So as super cute as they are, you can get away with a lot. It's kind of like um, quilters, you know, you never want to see the back of their quilts. <laughs> Saving my cute one, the very top of his head. Okay, so that's roughly what you want him to look like. Kind of staring up at you. I left my bottom open. I do have some pieces to go back in and fill in here. I can do that in a minute. If you find some that aren't attached at all, just go back and stab them a couple more times. You can turn these into ornaments. Just run a piece of um, fishing line through them, more towards their head than their center because of that, the gravity of them. If you are turning them into ornaments, you're gonna wanna put some down here. But I like him, he's pretty good. I hate to interrupt you, Chelsea. I'm just going to yeah. throw a disclaimer out there. Um, Mystery yep. Fiber Theater is going to go ahead and get started because it's 15 after, almost 15 okay. after. Um, I'm not trying to rush oh, or anything. Okay. I'm just, just giving a, um, this is your friendly message. Okay. Let me do it. Let me do the thing. And we'll, you can always go back and watch these parts. Your little bobbin has embroidery floss on it. This embroidery floss is just um, that DMC floss. It's already split from the six down to three. Three works pretty good. If you've never sewn before, hopefully the needle isn't too much of a pain for you, but you're gonna tie a knot in one end. Down, I do it twice. And where's my sewing needle? Can I grab one? If this needle's too, um, too small for you, just use whatever will fit through those beads. And they are 6-0 beads for eyes. They're good size eyes for these. Thread your needle. Now this is where you can come back and watch the video because this usually takes people a couple times if you've never sewn an eye on anything or a face on anything. This is the way I do it. So do what works for you, but this is the way I do it. I go from behind their ear, you can see that in the camera, and I stab right through their ear, and I aim for where their first eye is 
opposite of the ear that I went in. So from here, you come out. Your thread is going to catch behind the ear where you knotted it. I just undid my needle. Of course, come on. Okay. Then I grab my bead, put it on my needle, push it down. This is why you have extras, because some of them are really shaped oddly and won't go through your needle. Then from here, I do all this in one piece. I go back in, and I aim for my other eye, straight across. And pull that. I don't pull them super tight, because then they get disappeared into your heads. So just tight enough that they're going to hold on there. That's why they're not kids' toys. And slide my other one on. If you're not happy with eye placement, you can undo this and do it again. Then from here, I go back in where I came out. And I come out at the center, the best you can, center of the nose. Straight out the nose there. Up. There we go. And I make a Y shape for their nose. So here's my straight up and down, like if you're drawing a cat's nose. And you make a Y with your embroidery floss. Do not pull very tight or it will disappear into the wool. So I went out, down in, came out here, go back in the top of your Y, aim to the other side. You've got one side of your Y. Go back into the center. Now you can either stop here and just do the nose, or you can do an upside down Y on the bottom and give them a mouth. A lot of personality changes come from which way these Ys are facing. And if it's going too quickly, uh, this will post to, I believe, the Camp Yarn Z site, Facebook page. Yes, Lindsay. Okay. On the Facebook page as well, so we can also yeah. put it on the YouTube as well. Okay. So that way, um, it'll make it quite easy for you to grab too. Awesome. So I'll um I'll snag it too and put it on my Facebook page as well, so you can find it different ways and you can rewind and do this again. Oh, he's gonna be kind of pouty. This last stab. So you're constantly going back into the center there. I will stab back towards an ear. Now you can either do the opposite ear, or you can do the same ear. But that's where your needle is heading. It's right out back behind the ear. The great hiding spot for the end of your needle. <laughs> yeah, see, he's all wonky. Okay, so there's his face. Two things you can do with this. You can either tie it off here, or you can just hide it into the body of your sheep. These are not incredibly secure eyeballs they're not safety eyes by any means you come out the bottom of your sheep and don't feel bad about squishing them they bounce back come out and pull your needle off so then this you can trim i mean unless you get super crazy with these guys their faces aren't going to come off and then from here he's either done or you can go back and readjust your locks i tend to take my my needle felting needle and cover up behind the ear where that embroidery floss was but they're done and now you have a, a critter so cute <laughs> in a real class we'd all be able to see each other's or go back and fix um here yeah. you know um, fix errors an in-person class not that this isn't a real class but if y'all would like to show yours you don't have to yeah hold them, them up <laughs> oh Oh, cute, cute, cute. I'm going to stop the recording real quick. Okay. Oh, I love the gray one. 